everybody, this is Dan Stolbarger, and welcome to this week's um, Kefir Middle East Update. It's the week of April 7th, and uh, we want to jump right into our headlines. But first, a reminder that the PDF PowerPoint for this presentation, um, which is much more extensive than the time that we have on this YouTube, can be found at our website on holygroundexplorations.com. Uh, go there and uh, click Kafir Middle East Update, and that's a free PDF PowerPoint that accompanies us. Well, let's look at the headlines. Of course, right now, what looms quite large is the whole issue in Syria. Let's take a, a look at what's being said. You know, Congressman Scott Taylor, Republican from Virginia, earlier this week discussed his service in the Navy, he was a SEAL, and uh, gave kind of this overview of how he sees the world today. He says, Syria scares me. Syria is the most dangerous thing in the world right now. Unlike at any other time since World War II, you have so many powers playing in the same sandbox, Israel, Russia, Turkey, Iran, and now us. There's tremendous potential for flashpoints and the inability to de-conflict. I don't know what exactly the president's plan is right now, but I'm worried about increased forces in Syria. What's the plan? What's the goal? I want to hear about those things. Now, this was an interview that was given before the chemical weapons that were used. And Danny Danan, the Israeli ambassador to the... Um, to the UN states, the world cannot be silent in the face of the horrific massacre in Syria and allow this devastation to repeat itself. The UN must act immediately to put an end to the use of any chemical weapons and ensure their removal from Syrian territory. This is the UN's true purpose. It must fulfill its fundamental responsibility. And then, as you can see on the PowerPoint, we have uh, pictures. Uh, first of all, I think it's important to see the location where this Idib actually is located on the northwest corner of Syria, bordering Turkey. Uh, more than 60 people were killed now. We're hearing later this week that there's over 70 that were killed in an apparent chemical weapons strike by Syrian or uh, Russian army jets on Tuesday in this northwestern province. Um, toxic gas. Um, the Syrian government obviously has not commented, but uh, the pictures of babies suffocating from the chemical attack Netanyahu, Trump, everyone is basically saying this is unacceptable. This is beyond the red line. Uh, Nikki Haley, you know, earlier in the week before all of this, Nikki Haley made the comment in the United Nations that she announced that she will refocus the UN Security Council away from the Israeli Palestinian conflict and towards the long-standing issues that have been neglected in recent years. Um, so much, her quote, so much has been put towards Israel and the Palestinian Authority and not enough has been put towards some of the other issues. She made these comments on Monday, noting that from April 20th, uh, she'll be the president of the Security Council. She's going to uh, in a sense, put forth debate around issues such as is Iran's support for terrorism, and then here it is, Syria, as well as Hezbollah and Hamas. She goes on to say, this is our goal for the Middle East, open debate, and it should start now. Well, I, again, comments made before. Now, here are Nikki's remarks at the UN. She did not post the chemical weapons attack in Syria. Uh, she did not mince words at the UN on Wednesday warning that if the organization failed to act following this deadly attack in Syria that the Trump administration may handle the situation without them. 
her quote, this Security Council thinks of itself as a defender of peace and security and human rights. Uh, when the United Nations consistently fails in its duty to act collectively, there are times in the life of states that we are compelled to take our own action. Again, this coming on the heels of the chemical attack that took place on Tuesday. Uh, Haley has called out Russia, which holds a seat on the Security Council uh, for enabling Assad. Again, a quote from her, Assad has no incentive, incentive to stop using chemical weapons as long as Russia continues to protect his regime from consequences. Again, we have to stay tuned. This is um, front page news. And it's kind of hour by hour uh, wondering who's going to do what and when. Well, uh, a different turn the page. The next article is on something that we've covered over the last few months, the rise of anti-Semitism uh, for the first time since 1964, when the Anti-Defamation League began to track Americans' attitudes towards Jews. A majority of Americans polled said that they were concerned about anti-Semitic violence. In line with this, 84% said the U.S. government should do more to combat anti-Semitism. That's an increase from 70% uh, that was asked the same question in 2014. A new study that was released today reveals that anti-Semitism on college campuses, by the way, Columbia University leading the way, has increased 40% from last year. And genocidal expressions have doubled since 2016. Maybe this is the most troubling, finding that it's the drastic atmosphere of the genocidal expression towards the Jews. I mean, um, swastikas and graffiti and letters and posters um, sprawled everywhere. Um, in initiatives include killing the Jews, gas Jews, gas the kikes, death to Israel and to all Jews, Holocaust 2.0. Um, again, who would have thought that this rise of anti-Semitism would um, be in our midst today? Uh, again, the photo here, never again. That's the claim, of course, in Israel regarding the Holocaust. Never again is now. Um, April 17th, this is the so-called peace partner of Israel, uh, the Fatah. Um, Palestinian Authority, they're proclaiming April 17th as Prisoner's Day. Uh, we last week talked about this uh, university group known as Shabibia, and they've called for a day of terror against Israel. Again, April 17th, their words, let's turn April 17th into a fire that will burn the occupiers and burn the land like an inferno under the feet of the tyrants. And let us escalate the popular resistance, a term used for Palestinians regarding murdering Israelis. Let us increase this everywhere. Therefore, we call upon our brave students with the masses of our people to escalate the confrontation with the occupier, that being Israel, at all the places of confrontation. Again, this is a post on the official Fatah Facebook, March 29, 2017. Uh, this movement, once again, is something that you know, we talk often about the inability for real peace to take place in the Middle East, especially in Israel, regarding the Palestinians, until the incitement, not just of college students, but really the incitement of hatred from um, kind of the time of birth. Uh, the Palestinian textbooks are filled 
with not just anti-Semitic, but we're dealing with death to Jews, much of what we've just already covered. Um, it's an inbred hatred that unless it's broken, there will be no peace. Well, the quote of the week, um, this is from Menachem Begin, and it was given on uh, June 27, 2nd, 1982. He says, uh, don't threaten us with cutting off your aid. It won't work. I'm not a Jew with trembling knees. I'm a proud Jew with 3,700 years of civilized history. Nobody came to our aid when we were dying in the gas chambers and ovens. Nobody came to our aid when we were striving to create our country. We paid for it. We fought for it. We died for it. We will stand by our principles. We will defend them. And when necessary, we will die for them again with or without your aid. Again, Menachem Begin, this is what he told Joe Biden on June 22nd, 1982. The U.S. is having huge problems these days with the Chinese expansion plans, the North Korean nuclear and ballistic rocket program, the ISIS, um, the illegal and Islamic immigration, Obamacare, just to name a few things. But it's interesting that it's still somehow a main concern of ours, of where the Jews are building their homes. The so-called issue of the settlements, friends, it makes no sense at all. The good news is that God is on the throne. There's no doubt about that, that none of this is catching him off guard. He doesn't have to tune in to find out what's happening. He has set up the chessboard. He's put people in place. And I truly believe that we're coming to what's known in the Bible as the end of days. And it's important as believers that we rise up, that we take a stand, that we fight for righteousness sake, that we stand for peace and pray for the peace of Jerusalem. With that, God bless you until next week. Shalom.